Meanwhile, ByteDance is the Chinese owner of video app TikTok. It's putting its IPO plans on hold amid data security warnings from the Chinese Communist Party and its regulators. This, as Didi confirms, Chinese regulators told the app stores to remove all 25 of Didi's products from the app stores. Joining me right now is D.C. International Advisory CEO, former Radio Free Asia president and former deputy national security advisor for Dick Cheney, Stephen Yates, is here. Stephen, good to see you. Thanks very much for being with us this morning. Give us your sense of what's going on uh, with this China crackdown on Chinese companies looking to go public. Well, good morning, Maria. I mean, this is just the latest reminder that the Chinese Communist Party is, in fact, communist. And when it comes to sort of definition of terms, when you operate under a communist government, all property, intellectual or physical property, it belongs to the state. You get to use it at their pleasure. And when the Chinese government is telling major companies in its market who seek to operate abroad that they have data security concerns, we obviously know that Beijing doesn't really care about the security of private and corporate data. They care about control of private and corporate data. Uh, and so uh, I think this is just a very, very important reminder of their jealousy of any company that seems to be gaining in power or access to foreign capital uh, or seeks to allow any form of foreign governance to impose upon its corporate structure, uh, that Beijing will pull them back in a non-judicial and non-transparent way, which I think we're seeing with these IPOs. Yeah. Look, it's a really important point to make. Didi, of course, has been trading down ever since going public. Stock lost so much of its value when the CCP took the apps off of the app store. And now we see all of this reluctance by other Chinese companies to go public. Uh, TikTok uh, ha has, has shelved it for now. What should American investors need to understand? And American businesses who are getting ready to go operate in China, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan reported their earnings today. These are two major financials who are getting ready to open up shop in China. They've gotten the licenses from the CCP. What do they need to understand, given that the CCP just, you know, disappeared Jack Ma for a couple of months because he said something negative about the Chinese financial services regulatory backdrop? Yeah, I think that they need to be very cautious and they need to be honest with their stakeholders about the risk calculus for operating in, bu in business in China under current conditions. I mean, Xi Jinping has been more aggressive than previous leaders about imposing control over data, over uh, financial networks. Uh, let's not forget of the steamrolling of the freest of the Chinese cities in Hong Kong as an international financial hub, the massive changes that have taken in place and how China operates, I don't think have filtered into how analysts are looking at China as a potential growth market. Uh, so I think if you look yeah, at China's I mean, look, behavior, they seem to think it's more risky yep. than a lot of outsiders do. Yeah, for sure. And uh, President Biden is expected to warn U.S. businesses this week about having operations in Hong Kong. We've got reports showing that American companies face threats from the Chinese government gathering data stored in Hong Kong, Stephen. Look, I'm very disappointed in our, you know, global leadership that we haven't heard more about the fact that the CCP went into Hong Kong and just started throwing rules around, throwing people in jail. The freedom fighters are now, you know, under incredible pressure. And, you know, this was not supposed to happen. There wasn't supposed to be a reunification of Hong Kong and China for another 25 years, and yet the CCP, you know, pranced in there, threw people in jail, started laying down this new law, the national, sec national security law. Your thoughts on the Hong Kong story and what we might hear from President Biden today or this week about Hong Kong? Well, I agree completely that this is getting the bare minimum of coverage from U.S. leadership and from uh, alleged global leadership, whether it's European allies or otherwise. Uh, and it's a travesty because Hong Kong was an absolute vital engine to help revitalize China's economy after the Communist Party destroyed it through its own bad policies. Uh, and it was a it was vital uh, window for foreign investors and traders. 
dollars uh, to be able to engage and grow global economies. Uh, so it, there's a lot at stake that has been destroyed by this. But the chilling signal of extrajudicial processes to go in and just wipe out assets to arrest uh, corporate persons and shut down entities, it should have an immense chilling effect. Any CEO should be very cautious about transiting Hong Kong. Uh, and, uh, and we look at how the Chinese government have done this. Uh, there's really been a lot of quiet out there among international business and, uh, and government leaders. I think they have to take a more sober assessment and be more bold. Absolutely. It's, it's very disturbing, Stephen. We'll keep a spotlight on it for sure. Uh, Hong Kong is a dark place right now. It's certainly in my career. I remember it to be an international business hub. No longer the case. That's a very sad situation. And businesses are going to get impacted first, all those businesses who were conducting business there. Stephen, it's good to see you. Thanks very much. We'll keep following it, as always. We appreciate your insights on this.